Now then, welcome back to Sutty Live. Today, thanks to those amazing guys over at the EA Creator Network, we're taking a look at the PC version of F122, and in particular, video settings. Getting the most out of your graphic settings for any driving game is very, very important. And one of the things I like about the F1 franchise is that they've started to take advantage of NVIDIA's DLSS. DLSSSSSSSS, or as it's better known as, as Deep Learning Super Sampling, is basically some voodoo from NVIDIA that gives you a sharper image, a faster image, with less overhead on your graphics card. So if it's there to use, why wouldn't you? What I want to see today is what kind of impact does it actually have on this year's F1 title. Now, before we get started, just bear in mind that this is a pre-release version. So the performance increases that you see here are not representative of the final version of the game. In my opinion, the final version of the game will be even slicker. So just bear that in mind as we tick through these, uh, these results. The first thing that I want to do is establish a baseline using no DLSS settings. The way we're going to do this is use the in-game benchmark engine along with the NVIDIA performance overlay and run one lap of what I think is the shortest track that we've got available in this version, which is the Red Bull Ring in Austria. Okay, so into graphic settings and down to video mode. Now you'll notice that I do use VSync and I do lock the refresh rate of the monitor. This is more for content creation to make sure that the capture card stays in sync. Fire up the benchmark and see how we do. So the numbers that I'm actually looking at here are predominantly around the video uh, stats in the top right hand corner. What I'm very interested in is looking not only at the frame rate but just how hard the graphics card and CPU are running. The CPU is barely sweating which you, you would expect. GPU is 80-ish, high 70s. Nothing wrong with that. Holding nicely on the current FPS, locked to the refresh rate at 119. And the minimum FPS is staying very, very reasonable. What I like about these benchmarks as well is that it always uses a different running order, different cars. I think that's a lot closer to real world testing than just a fixed outcome run. And over the line, Mr. Verstappen winning. No shock there. Okay, so we can see there minimum, average, maximum, all at the top of the range, which is exactly what I would expect. Okay, so now we're going to run exactly the same settings, but we're going to put DLSS into balanced mode and see what, if any difference, it makes. Right, then back into graphic settings, into video mode. Right, we're going to do two things here. We're going to turn the filtering up. Filtering usually has quite a high impact on graphics cards, and I just want to use this to emphasize just how well DLSS works. Let's run that benchmark again. So straight away, the thing that you notice is that the frames are very similar to what they were before. They're capped out. Again, this is more down to using V-Sync and a fixed refresh. However, look at that GPU utilization. That has dropped significantly from where it was. 
around about 18 to 20 percent maybe image still looks nice and crisp very very smooth definitely playable see the GPU drop in there below 60% which is bonkers CPU round about where it was before it's time to win for Mr. Hamilton there we go exactly the same uh, performance but much much less effort from your graphics card So there we go, using the high preset, even by enabling DLSS and turning filtering up to 16 times, in some parts of the track, we saw a drop of around 20% GPU utilization, and yet still the same, if not better, visual fidelity. The thing to do now is push it into the ultra high settings to see what kind of impact it has there. Right, back into graphic settings. See, we've got it on ultra high now. Into video. Everything's as it was. DLSS still on. 16 times filtering. Let's see how this performs. So straight away you see more depth in the uh, in the game, better shadows. Exactly what you would expect by moving the quality preset up. Now the GPU is absolutely pegged back at this stage, but this this is what you would expect. You know, we, this is the top setting in the game, and just bearing in mind the very modest PC specs I've got, it still looks smooth. We're still getting what we've seen there: 87 frames, 85 frames. This is this is really sweating the graphics card now. Not necessarily an issue if you've got decent cooling built in. I think I've just seen that peak above what was that? 96, 97 frames? Still looks fab. CPU's working a little bit harder. But the majority of the processing is still landing on your graphics card, which is exactly where you want it. Ocon takes the win. So maximum FPS, 97, average of 84. So ultra high, running DLSS, still managing an average above 70 frames a second. Now bear in mind the stats of this PC that I shared with you earlier. That is pretty impressive. What we need to do now is see what the impact is of turning DLSS back off. So we're going to leave everything as it was, but we're going to turn off the LSS and the filtering. The reason we're changing filtering is just to emphasize how good this is. Back into the benchmark. GPU is absolutely rammed flat out 100% and we're only getting around 40 frames. 
That is a huge, huge difference. In terms of the way that the image looks, I can't really tell the difference if I'm honest. This does not feel as smooth, obviously. In terms of the fidelity, I think you'd be hard pushed to tell them two apart. Just managed to get over 50 frames now. But not for long. interesting as well that the CPU utilization has gone so low. Clearly not a happy rig right now. It's the Bottas. Such a difference there. 39 minimum, 48 average and 56 maximum. And that is impressive. If we focus on the frame rates that the game was reporting, the difference between DLSS off and on using the ultra high quality preset is somewhere between 70 and 80%. And just bear in mind to emphasize the point, that was without the 16 times filtering on as well. So I think it's fair to say that not only have the guys done an amazing job at optimizing this engine, um, if you've got the opportunity to use DLSS, I hugely recommend that you, uh, you turn it on. In terms of what I actually play with, um, because of the system specs I've currently got, I generally stick to the high um, quality preset. I will have DLSS on. I'll have 16 times filtering turned on as well. Um, and that tends to give me the uh, the best results that I need both for enjoying the game and uh, creating content. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you want me to dig a little bit deeper into some of these settings, please let me know in the comments. Great to hear from you. And uh, until next time, take it easy. Bye-bye.